Hey, hello guys, welcome to the next Blender tutorial. So, something that I want to talk about in this tutorial, which uh, we didn't cover in our last tutorial, HDRIs. We've got in our object to move like the other objects within our scene. Something else that needs to happen, which is the next step, is to light our object, like everything else is lit on the scene. And yes, you can go and you can create lights and you can try and simulate exactly the same lighting as your scene that you've tracked. But something to keep in mind is that if your object is shiny, then it needs to reflect your environment as well, which is gonna be a bit tricky, right? Because that means you then gotta create all the other objects. And so the easier way for us to do this is just to simply use an HDRI. And yes, you can uh, go online and you can look for, for HDRIs. There are thousands of uh, sites out there that give you free HDRIs and you can find one that matches your scene as close as possible. But something that I was very interested in was to shoot my own HDRI. Uh, because that just makes it 100% authentic and so I started going down the journey I looked at how you shoot HDRIs and I shot them I took my camera I put on a tripod and if you don't know the process of shooting an HDRI basically what you've got to do is you've got to shoot a 360 degree all-round shot of your scene now if you have a 360 degree well if you have a 360 camera no problem you take the photo an HDRI is basically a high definition image which in your 3d package your program is able to get highlights out of it and get low lights out of it basically the shadows you'll see in an HDRI if you push the exposure up uh, you'll actually see how well and how properly it overexposes and if you underexpose it you'll actually see how your highlights cut, uh, um, become. So the most perfect example that I can use is that you're shooting inside and you've got a window open within the room and you can see outside. Now, usually if you shoot within the room, your camera exposes for, for the room itself. And what happens is that um, you're outside the window overexposes the sky. You don't even see the sky. You just see this white light glaring through. But if you dial down your exposure, your room will become darker and your outside will become well exposed. Well, an HDR, an HDRI uh, photo actually holds that data. So if I, if I bring down the exposure on my photograph, on my HDRI, you'll actually see outside the window. If you overexpose it, you'll see inside your room. And in fact, uh, photographers often use the, um, shooting an HDRI so that they can in post correct the the difference in the, the two exposed areas. That's why you'd want to shoot your own HDRI. So, I uh, found two programs that that are often used in, in HDRIs and uh, they are not free. And then I look for free programs that do it because within this program, you've got to be able to stitch all your photos together. And remember, it's three photographs, all right? That is because you need to take a proper exposed photograph, you need to take a overexposed photograph, usually by three stops up, and you need to take an underexposed photograph. And then what happens is then your program will put that data together and um, it contains it within the photograph so that when you um, overexpose or underexpose, it's gonna pull up the correct values. But first you've got to stitch your photograph together, you've got to do it three times, and then you have to layer the, the images on cross. And there are some really good programs out there that are used, but again, you've got to buy them. They are not cheap, they were very expensive. And I tried to use the free ones, and uh, even I couldn't even get to the part where I'm overlaying my different exposed areas. It was bad, all right? To the point that I said, okay, look, it's not gonna work. I guess I'll move on. But then, I found an awesome app uh, by a company. This app is called HDRI, and literally, with ease, I was able to um, take my phone. As easy as that, I got shooting my HDRIs away. Um, the beautiful thing is that uh, everything is absolutely free. There's, there's no subscription fee, it's absolutely free. And when I'd asked them about, okay, you know, um, because it looked like they were gonna work on a credit system where you buy credits, and then with that, you can shoot amount of photos, and they said, no, they're not, they're actually not going to charge um, for creating HDRIs. And 
and that's actually quite amazing and the reason why it's amazing is because once you shoot shoot shot your hdri it's not the program in your phone that does the photo stitching and the exposure uh, evaluation it, it, it actually uploads the images that you took to the server where the server will then put it together and within within, within a minute of minutes literally sometimes even seconds depending on how complicated your shoot was um, you got a hdri which you could download you could send it to yourself whatever um, and then I was able to get a proper EXR HDRI photo with, which then I used in my blender scene um, I shot a lot and the beautiful thing is because it's on your phone if you decide like I did you're on a location and it looks so beautiful you want to use it in a 3d scene no problem you just shoot the HDRI by the time you get home uh, your HDR is ready all right so now I guess the question is how then do I use my HDRI within blender and that's what we're gonna look at today so um, I'm going to open up Blender here and I am going to just take a our scene from last week all right and we're going to be applying an HDRI over this okay so I'm then going to load my HDRI into Blender and that's quite simple just by on your tabs on your left hand side there is the world the world tab over here and here under color now right now at the moment if I put my scene into um, render preview okay and I scroll around you can see it's gray there is no HDRI in here and if you don't know this already but blender has for you if I select scene world here under lighting it's going to give you usually it gives you a, 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 a already set up um, HDRI for you okay mine does not have because I've already altered it but I bet you if I create a new scene and I go there there it is there's your default HDRI uh, okay there it is right over there okay so that is lit up by that default HDRI, but that's not what we're doing here. We are going to be adding in our gold reef HDRI uh, footage. So like I said, that's quite simple. So in your world setting over here, um, I am going to click over here on the left dot. It's then going to uh, enable me to select what I'm wanting to input here. It's almost like a node system okay so I'm gonna insert my environment texture now uh, I can either create a new one or I can select one that's already in uh, within blender or I can open up one that I've created already now before I go there I just want to show you that uh, if you have your material your shader editor open like I do over here um, I I click on this drop down of object and I'll go to world and now this is your node setup for your uh, envi environment um, your HDRI you can see I've got the node here exactly like what we see here on the tab and I'm going to open up one okay you can see I've got my HDRI over here that I've used that I've created this was created within the app HDRI I'm going to open it up and the minute I do that if I go to scene world there is my HDRI now plugged into my scene it is lighting up my scene. If I go to light uh, in, my, in my scene collection and I hide my light, you'll see my scene is still well lit up. The beautiful about the HDRI is you can see on this day, the sun was in uh, this specific area over here. And you can actually see that that is the light uh, within the scene. Okay, you can see the building behind me is casting like a shadow on this side and the top is well lit up because of the sky on this side. Now, um, you'll see this is this node over here, background is my strength. If I push it up, you can see it's not pushing up the shadows that much, it's pushing up the sky. You can also see how my object is showing that, so it's realistic. Okay, if I bring it down, it's exactly the same well it's as if you can see how the trees have more of a silhouette 
my HDRI is probably perfect. You can actually almost see, yeah, like the um, speculars, specular, speculars of the scene. All right, so I'm gonna put it at one. I found that to work. But now, of course, you might say, all right, look, uh, I need to position my HDRI according to my scene setup. So how is our scene, up, scene setup? Now remember that uh, this th this very platform over here, which you can see my HDRI, is this over here. So I need to rotate it slightly so that I have the building as it was, if you're looking my footage. And if you don't see your camera, uh, that's because in the material preview, you need to go to the render preview and there you can see your your actual scene. So you need to match the lighting to, to, to this exactly that in front of the camera is the building, behind the camera is um, yes. And you can see that my HDR is slightly to the side. So we're gonna have to add a couple nodes in here. The first one I'm going to add in here is not my geometry. We are going to add in a texture coordinate. And then you're going to add in your mapping node. You're going to plug in your um, object out of this object uh, output here into your into your vector and then from the vector of your mapping into the, the, the vector of your HDRI map. Now what that's going to allow you is in my rotation I can rotate my HDRI as needed. Alright and therefore because that is the case my scene is lit up exactly as it was within yes on the actual shoot okay so that that's basically how you do the an hdri that's how i found it it worked beautifully it's awesome love it free just want to give those guys a heads up for, for, for that app created i'm sure they're going to get lots of downloads now and uh yeah, happy HDR, uh, HDRIing away. Next week or in the next video, we're gonna continue on our quest of this 3D scene. All right, looking forward to it. And uh, guys, support us by subscribing to this channel. There are plenty of other things. Also, if you wanna look in the playlist that we have here and also like this video, cause I know you liked it. And uh, please, yeah, subscribe. Until next week or the next video, check it. Cheers.